Hey everybody, today I want to teach you all about TFT. And this is a great time to get started in Teamfight Tactics because the new set, Set 9, is coming out right now. What's best about this game is that it is completely free to play. There's nothing you need to unlock that helps you in the game, only cosmetics. So that means everyone has an equal chance to do just as well as anybody else no matter how long you've been playing or how much money you have spent. So just a little bit about me before we get into this. I've been challenger before and I've qualified for and competed in a lot of TFT tournaments. So hopefully I can show you all the best way to kind of like get into the game as well as move on beyond that because I've been helping players learn how to play pretty much since the start of TFT. But let's get into how to actually play. So open up the League of Legends client, click on the play button, click on TFT, choose normal or ranked, and then click confirm. After that, you can change your cosmetics if you want, or you could also change your legends. So legends are kind of like an archetype you could kind of play in the game right now, and it is one of the new mechanics of the set. So don't get too confused by that right now. Essentially, all you need to do is click on each champion, read the descriptions. For example, Caitlyn says, get strong units at the start of the game. That's kind of like what all these legends help you do. I'm gonna choose a Pengu one though, because this one says, play it safe, great for beginners, but in your free time, you could always read through all of these to see which one you enjoy the most. After that, press equipped and then press find match. Once you do find a match, a thing will pop up and then just press accept and then you'll get on into your game. So this is the load screen. You pretty much just wait for the game to load. And these are all the other players in your game along with their cosmetics. Again, some of them look cooler than others, but they don't actually do anything in the game. TFT is actually one of the only truly free to play games that exists right now. Other games, they might be free, but you have to like pay to unlock certain characters or grind a lot to unlock certain characters. There's no grinding necessary at all in TFT, which is probably my favorite part of the game. Now that the game has started, let's go ahead and see what's going on. So there are a bunch of portals here and you could choose what type of map you're playing on in the game right now. So uh, every player gets one vote. It's kind of like a democracy. And then the game randomly picks whichever portal is going to be the theme of today's game. So you could look at them on the right, the university, they offer prismatic augments in the first round. And then the other two portals do something a little bit different. But this game, it randomized into Piltover's The University. So uh, the first augment offered this game will be prismatic. You could again read all of these if you want. Uh, I have them available on my website, bunnymuffins.lol slash set nine if you want to uh, read through every single one of them before you even play. You don't have to though, uh, because they made it very intuitive that you can kind of just enter the game and see what's going on without needing to do a lot of research beforehand. So the first augment offered this game will be a prismatic. What is a prismatic augment? Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, but right now the game just started. We're facing a bunch of minions and we want to buy some units in order to kill them. So we can place a unit in and you may notice that a little thing here on the left hand side popped up and these are what we call traits in TFT. Traits are going to help your team get stronger and certain champions synergize with one another, similar to like how pretty much everything else in life works. Some units work well together and some units do not. So what you can do in this game is kind of pair up different units in order to get some stat bonuses to make your team stronger. So right now we want to add in a Rogue, Shadow Isle, Sorcerer, or Piltover, but unfortunately we don't really have anything both in the shop or on our bench. Uh, this little area down here is called our bench in order to kind of fulfill those. So if that happens, it's okay, just wait and it will happen eventually. Down here, the units that I'm clicking on is called the shop. So these are the units that can show up and you can just buy them and sell them and use them for your team. And actually I made a mistake. We actually do have a Shadow Isle unit that we could put in called Malachi, but we'll get into that a little bit later. First, let's pick our augments. So uh, the augment that we chose in the beginning is part of our legend. So that's why our little legend Pengu icon is on the left here. And this one, it makes it so our tactician is small and speedy and heals two health after a PVP round and also grants two gold per round but there are also two other ones here that we could read about later. There are a ton of different augments and you'll see a bunch of them the more and more that you play. And right now we are just going to do the one that is gonna be the default one. So we're gonna use the one that's based on our legend. So we're gonna pick the left one right now. Um, after that, uh, you'll notice that when we put Maokai in, this little thing on the left turns bronze and now it shows that we have the Shadow Isle buff active. So what does this do? Well, you can read it here, but essentially we just get a uh, buff after we damage or receive damage eight times. And then the bonuses are listed out down here. So if we have two Shadow Owl units, 
we get this bonus. If we have four, we get this bonus. And if we have six, we get this one. And you could look at all the other champions that we can add. So we have Maokai, Viego, Callista, Gwen, Senna, and we could also add in an emblem, which gives an additional trait. So let's buy this thing in our shop. Notice how this thing is a little bit shiny with like an outline over it. So we buy this Oriana. You may notice that we have two Orianas on our bench. And then every time you buy three champions, we're going to do the same thing with Cho'Gath right now. Your units upgrade. So what that means is it's kind of like getting a pair or like a three of a kind in a card game. So the unit just gets a ton stronger. So we have a new Oriana here. This is called like a one star Oriana, as you can see from the stars here. And then we also have the two star Oriana. So I'm going to put her in because she is a bit stronger uh, just because she has more stats. And then if we compare them, like the one star Oriana has like 500 health and then the two star Oriana has 900 health. They are a ton stronger. So you always want to put in the two star units if you can. The next thing I want to talk about is what's going to happen in the next round. We're going to do what's called a level up. So uh, experience is one of the ways to get stronger in the game because it allows you to get higher levels. And what a higher level means is you get access to better units and you can fit additional champions onto your team. So we'll see that in just a moment here where we level up from level three to level four because we gain two XP every single round. And in this case, you can see here, up here, we have three out of four champion slots. So we could add in an additional champion. I'm gonna put Maokai back in to get the Shadow Owl buff back. Uh, but you could put in whatever fits your team at that current time. The next thing I want to talk about is buying experience. So you can buy experience to accelerate your level ups. You will gain two XP every single round, but you could buy it manually with your gold. And we have some gold here. So right now we have 12 gold and champions cost gold too. So Tristana, she's a one cost unit. Same with Renekton. They're the same color because of that. Same with our Oriana and the Malachi's that we bought before. But there are also two cost units. So we have this Cassidin and this other Kasadin, which are both two cost units. So we could go ahead and buy them. The higher cost a unit is, the stronger they are, but that doesn't mean that the low cost units are not important. Low cost units are great because they get you a stronger early game because it's easier to get them to two star as we talked about before. So if we compare this Oriana, that's two star, she has 900 health and she does like a bunch of damage. And we compare that to let's say the Kasadin, which we'll do after this round. So this is called the carousel round. Essentially what this means is you could pick an item and a champion that's rotating in this carousel. So now we're in the next round, we got more upgrades. We have Jin and Kassadin, but what I want to mention before about one cost versus two cost versus even a three cost unit, as we see with the Karma here, is that it's more difficult to upgrade your higher cost units because it's rarer to get them. That's why you need to level up to get access to them. It can be a little intimidating, but over time it'll get easier and easier. Uh, but what I wanted to say before is that one cost units are not useless because they are great for your early game because it's easier to get them upgraded. Again, if we check out the Oriana, 900 HP, and we compare her to the Karma, even though Karma is a three cost unit, you spend three gold on Karma, you spend three gold on Oriana, Karma has less health than Oriana, and she probably does a little bit less damage because she's not upgraded yet. So. Even though Karma is more expensive, the Oriana 2 star right now is going to be a little bit better. However, of course, the Karma 2 star is going to be even stronger. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we want to level up manually. So you could see 4 out of 10 XP here and we can buy XP in increments of 4. So we're going to go ahead and click that once, 8 out of 10, and then click it again to level 5. And then we could put another unit in. So one thing I want to talk about with gold. Gold is going to be one of the most important resources in this game. There are like three resources right now. It's going to be your gold. It's going to be your health total, which we see on the right hand side here. If you have no health, you can't play the game, you lose. Uh, and then we also have items, which are on the left here. We'll talk about items after the next round. But gold is very important because you could get what's called interest gold. So every increment of 10 gold, you could get one additional gold. And you could see how much gold you get per round by hovering over the gold icon over here. So we have total possible income, which is seven, and that includes five passive income. That's just five you get every round, no matter what. You get interest. We have one interest right now because we're at 10 gold, and then you could get more gold for your win streaks and loss streaks, and you also get one gold every time you win. So what's a win streak and loss streak? So win streaks and loss streaks are explained by what you do during that stage. So if you win two in a row, you get a bonus. If you win three in a row, you get a bonus. And then if you win four in a row, you get two bonus gold. 
And then at five wins, you get three gold every round. So if you keep winning, you get more gold. But also, if you keep losing, you can get more gold too. So you could kind of play around with that to kind of maximize the amount of gold you get and like maybe alternate between win streaks and loss streaks to get something really, really cool going on. So we are on another neutral round. We are going to kill one of the mobs. And you can see up here, like it kind of shows you what every round is. So the first round is going to be uh, the augment picking round. And then you have two PVP rounds followed by the carousel that we did before, two more PVP rounds, and then the neutral round that we're on right now. So we got a bunch of items you may have noticed on the left, and there's another Karma. I'm gonna go ahead and buy her because I want to kind of get a Karma two star. That'd be kind of cool, right? Uh, but we also wanna put some synergies in. So I'll put the Karma and the Soraka in. Let's go ahead and just level up right now just to do that because they are both invokers and they get bonus mana every time. So what do we want to do here? Well, we could build some items as we talked about before. So uh, items, you're just kind of kind of have to play around with them a bunch to know which one's good. You could look at some guides. I, I put a guide up on my website, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta in case you want to like see what items are good on which champions. But a lot of the truth is like a lot of items work on a lot of different things and in a lot of different combinations. But you can kind of right click on one of these components and see what they can build into. So you could build like what's called an ionic spark. And the items that are highlighted are items that we could build right now because it sees what's on your bench that you can build. So if we hover over ionic spark, we could see that it has an effect. It gives 50% shred and we could see at the bottom shred reduces magic resistance and when enemies cast an ability, they're zapped for magic damage equal to 185% of their max mana. We could get even more items here by taking the default Pengu Augment. So we could just go ahead and pick that and get one random completed item. We'll pick that up. Let's continue reading all these other items. Uh, Runon's Hurricane, you could fire an additional bolt at a nearby enemy and deal 50% attack damage. And then we could build Dragon Claw, which gives you a lot of magic resistance and every two seconds you regenerate 4% of your maximum health. I'm gonna go ahead and build the Dragon Claw right now, just because we have some strong tanks right now, because I wanna play around some of my tanks. And we could also see from this augment, we got an additional item, we just got a completed item. So I'm just gonna put that on one of my other units as well. Uh, the other things on my bench are going to be more components. This is a bow, so we could see what items the bow builds. And then we also have this thing called a champion duplicator. So what this does is, you could use this on a champion to create a one star copy on your bench. So if you have a lot of champions right now and you wanna get a big upgrade, you could use a champion duplicator to kind of do that. We'll use it later in the game so I can show you what it does later on. The next item here is called a reforger. So you could use this on a champion to unequip all items and randomly transform them into new ones. So we could essentially use this bow, put it on one of our champions and then use the reforger on them to get a new item component. So we got two rods now, which is pretty cool because now we could kind of play around our karma a little bit. So we could right click the rod and we could see that we could build Rabinon's death cap. And this is a humble hat that can make or unmake the world itself apparently, but it gives you 70 ability power. So I'm just gonna drop that on my karma right now. And then we could even do something called using the champion duplicator to get her to two star. So we could go ahead and do that right now. And there, we just have a really strong karma right now. The next thing I kind of want to do is build more on the synergies that we have on the left-hand side. So we have two invoker right now, but we could get a lot more. If we look at some of the other players, let's click on this one, for example, you'll see that they have three traits active. Other players might have even more. This person has four traits active. So we probably want to go a little bit deeper into that. So I'm looking into my shop. We have a Lissandra and a Galio. So I think I'm going to go ahead and buy those, but we also want to make 30 interest. So I'm going to sell my Viegos. Uh, and just get up to 30 gold because I don't think I'm going to be playing Viego this game. I think I'm going to play something around like the invokers that we see here. Uh, unfortunately, we end up losing this round, but next round we're going to go into the carousel and then we're going to pick another item. I think mana items are going to be pretty good for my team comp, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get a tier. Tier gives mana. Uh, maybe if we can't get that, I could do maybe some other defensive items. Uh, things like that. But on the carousel, you want to try to complete items that you have on your bench. So we're going to try and go ahead and do that because items are more powerful when they're upgraded because uh, there's just kind of like a multiplier effect. Unfortunately, someone took the tier, so I'll go ahead and take the sword and then I'll build an item on my karma. And this is one of those specific cases where I just know that sword and bow build a pretty decent item on karma, even though it might be a little unintuitive because 
Um, sword and bow are attack speed and attack damage, and karma is more of like a spellcaster. But uh, it's not really too much to pay attention to right now. All you really need to know is that it kind of completes a decent item right now. But let's go ahead and level up again. And then I want to put in four invoker because that's going to make my team a little bit more powerful. So I need to put her in, Lissandra and the Galio. So now we have four invoker and we got the second bonus now. So before invokers, every three seconds, your units gain mana and it was only five mana. But at four, it gives an additional 15 to your invokers. And at level six, it gives 20 to all units and an additional 15 to invokers. So that is definitely pretty powerful stuff. Uh, but I kind of want to make interest here. So let's sell up to 10 gold. So I think I'm going to sell maybe the Maokais and the Nasus. And then we're at like above 10 gold now. We should be able to get the interest. So we got one interest there. We got bonus gold because of our Augment Tiniest Titans. Uh, after every PvP round, we get two more gold per round. And I want to try to fit in more synergy. So if we right click on Karma, you'll see that she's Ionian and Invoker. So I want to play more Ionian units. And if we hover over Ionia, you'll see that we need three Ionian units to activate the trait. So I want to try to do that eventually. Maybe we take out the Oriana for Jin, and then maybe we take uh, the Cho'Gath out for Aurelia. We'll do that next round. So we'll sell these. I don't think we're playing them anymore. We'll buy the Shen. Shen is also an Ionian and also an Invoker. So they're really good to pair together, the Karma and the Shen. So we'll go ahead and do that next round. Uh, and keep in mind, the round timers, they're gonna feel a little fast at first. You might not be able to do everything you want in the first round, but I promise you the more that you play, the easier and easier it'll get and the more use of things it'll kind of happen. But we could also buy this Yasuo. So I'll buy Yasuo, sell this Aurelia, and then we'll kind of fit these people in. So maybe we sell the Kasdan and the Cho'Gath, and then we put in the Yasuo and the Shen. So we need one more Invoker to get to six Invokers. So that could be either Rise or Cassiopeia. As we can see over here, for Ionia, we want six, so we need Set, Zed, Ari, or Aurelia. We'll try to fit some of those in eventually, uh, but let, let's go back into the game. We're on the PvE round again, so uh, we are going to get a bunch of items. The PvE rounds, they always give some type of loot, so that's always something to kind of look forward to. So we built one of the tank items before with the Dragon Claw. So we want to itemize some of our tanks. So I'm going to put the Dragon Claw on Shen. We have one extra Invoker slot right now, so I'm actually going to take one of them out to put in the Sejuani. And look at that, we got the Freljord bonus, so that's pretty cool. Uh, after eight seconds, an Ice Storm strikes the battlefield and enemies take a percentage of their max health as true damage and gain debuffs. And the debuffs you could read about down there based on whether you have two, three, or four Freljord units. Uh, and then we got a bunch of items. We probably want to go ahead and build them because again, built items are better than unbuilt items because the components, they just give a stat. So tier of the goddess, it just gives 15 mana. So if we put two tiers on someone, they just get 30 mana. But if we build what's called a blue buff, they actually get 40 mana, as you can see by the indicator there, and they get 10 ability power and an effect. So again, that's just how much more powerful building items is. It just makes your team a lot, lot stronger because there's kind of like an extra bonus effect that you could kind of get on your unit. So I'm going to build the blue buff on our Karma and she's going to be casting really, really quickly. Okay, now onto the next augment round. So we've taken the default augment the first two times, but I want to show you something a little bit cooler. Uh, let's say you don't have to take the default augments. You could take some of the other ones too, such as the one in the center or the one on the right. Uh, the one in the center, it gives you an Orn item. We'll get into that later. And then the one on the right, it gives you a shield based on the current stage for a couple of seconds after casting a spell. And let's say we like this one, but we don't really like the middle one. You could press this little uh, shuffle icon here and it gives you a completely new augment. And you could do this every single round. But I think we're going to take Combat Caster because our units are going to be casting a lot. And this gives us a bonus every time we cast a spell. So I'm going to click that and our Karma with blue buff should be getting tons and tons of shields, which would kind of be pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and sell this Kaisa. She is a Void and Challenger, so I don't really think we're going to be using her. I should probably put this item on someone else. I'll just put it on my Sejuani for now. And then we have to think about what we want to do later on with our team. So remember when we upgraded a unit, we got three copies of a unit and they turned into like a super unit, as you could kind of call it. There is another upgrade, which is upgrading a unit to three stars. So we have the one star Karma on our bench over here. And on the top right, you can see our stats. And then we have the two star Karma on our board. And again, you can see our stats here. They increased a bunch. But what if I told you that we could get a three star Karma? That would be 
kind of cool, right? Uh, so hopefully this game we can get it. It takes a little bit of luck to kind of get to. But a three-star Karma is going to buff up our team to like new heights, completely new heights. But you, the caveat is that you need nine copies of Karma. So we have three here. We have one and one. So we have five total Karma. So all we need to do is find four more Karmas to kind of complete our team. And you might be wondering, how do we do that? Because we've only seen one shop per round. Well, what if I told you that we could see multiple shops per round? So you see this little refresh button down here? If you click this, you can kind of get a new shop. So if you don't like your shop, you could click it and then get a bunch of new options. The one caveat is that uh, it costs two gold. So buying XP costs four gold, refreshing the shop costs two gold. So you always want to uh, balance re-rolling versus leveling up in order to make the most use out of your gold. But I want to find Karma 3-star, so I'm going to keep re-rolling in order to find more copies of her to get her to 3-star. Because uh, then, again, she gets like much, much more powerful. And as you can see, there are unit odds over here. That's what these little numbers mean. So 19% is a chance to get like a one-cost unit, and then it changes based on the level that you're at. Uh, but let's finish one of our items here. If we click this little button down here, we could go back to our board, and we see this giant spelt. So giant spelt is a tank item, so I'm going to grab some other tank item to like complete a tank item because uh, that's just one of the best uses of that item. So hopefully we get this other belt. Unfortunately, we're the highest health, so we're not able to get that. But there's a chain vest over here. This one gives armor, so we could just go ahead and pick that up and then build the item right now. So we got the item here. Uh, if we hover over the items, you could see that we build Sunfire Cape. I'm gonna put that on my Shen. Essentially what it does is it gives you a bunch of health, it gives you some armor, and then every two seconds, enemies within two hexes are burned and wounded. So burn, it deals a percentage of their maximum health as true damage, and then a wound just means that they receive a little bit less healing. But I'm gonna keep rolling again. Uh, you may have noticed that I am rolling down to 50 gold every single turn, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So we get another Karma 2-star, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that, and it combines her into a Karma 2-star. Uh, but I never want to roll below 50 gold right now because uh, you can get interest gold as we talked about before. So I don't want to uh, roll all the way down to zero right now because then I'll get zero interest gold. But uh, I'm not going to roll past 50, but I do want to roll down to 50 gold. Uh, the reason why I want to roll down to 50 gold is because uh, the maximum interest you can get is five interest. So going up to like 60 gold, 70 gold, 100 gold, it doesn't actually benefit your team because you can only get a maximum of five golds. For example, we have 67 right now. So you'd expect us to get six gold of interest. But if we hover over this icon, it says that we only get five. So that's why I want to roll down or level up in order to kind of use my gold more efficiently. So we're just going to roll down and buy a lot of the invoker units. Uh, so we do have the Galio here. We have the Karma over here. So we just need two more copies of Karma in order to make our team work. Oh, look, there is a Cassiopeia. So I'm going to go ahead and sell one of the units by the Cassiopeia and then try to put her and Galio in next round so that we could get six Invoker. I think that'd be pretty cool. So we are fighting against someone here. A lot's been going on, and you may or may not have noticed that we're actually fighting other players. And they're doing the same exact thing that we're doing, except they have different draws or different... Uh, shops. So uh, it's kind of like a card game. You could think of TFT sort of like that. Uh, there are a bunch of things that happen and you try to maximize whatever you draw. And sometimes it's going to be good, sometimes it's going to be bad, but no matter what, you're trying to uh, make the best of a bad or good situation. So uh, what is the situation we're in right now? Well, if you look on the right hand side, you can see the health totals and some people already got knocked out. So in TFT, there's something called like a top four or like winning the game. You don't have to completely win the game to like uh, get rating or whatever because there's a thing called a top four. Top fouring just means that you place in the top half of your game. So there are eight players total. So if you place fourth or higher, you're going to be gaining rating for that game, which is kind of cool. You, some people consider that like a mini win, uh, but others only consider like true wins a win. So that's kind of like a personal preference on... <laughs> how you interpret that. Some people only consider getting first place a win, but other people consider uh, getting like a top four as like a good result. So I wanna roll down a bit more. I want to kind of get my Karma three start. We see another Karma there, but our bench is full. So we have to sell something else and there's a little notification there. So I'm gonna keep rolling down and buying these Karmas. I'm pretty much only looking for Karma right now and hopefully we'll be able to get her. So now you see this golden thing. If we click that, 
she upgrades into a three-star unit. And now she has 2,000 health, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, that's very, very powerful, and that should help our team like a ton right now. Um, but yeah, let's build this last item that we have on our bench. Essentially, it just takes two item components to build an item. So we'll just do that right now. If we hover over the item, it'll say that we could build a ZZ Rot portal. So um, combat start, your units can taunt, and on death, you spawn a Voidling, and that Voidling taunts nearby enemies. And the effect is changed if it's created by a summon unit. Don't worry about that later part. Essentially, what it means is it just creates a dude that can kind of tank for you. So I want to show you a little trick. Let's say you want to build the item, and there's a two-star Shen, that's very, very nice. Uh, but let's say you want to build an item, but you don't know who to put it on yet. What you can do is buy a unit in the shop that you don't care about, so Viego we don't really care about right now, and then build the item on that unit. After that, you could sell the unit to remove the item, because that's the only way to remove items that we can have access to right now. There are other effects in the game that can remove items off of specific units, but those consumables don't occur every single game. But after we put the item on a unit, I'll do it again, uh, you'll notice that we can't really remove the Zizirot portal off a certain unit. Even if we right click them and see the item here, we can't like drag it back to our bench. So the only way to remove items right now is just to sell it, and then after that you could place it on one of your other units. Uh, whoever you wanted to that game. I'm going to put on my Galio right now. I think he's a pretty decent item holder for ZZ Route right now, uh, but I'll explain more of that in some of my more advanced guides. So if that is of interest of, to you, go ahead and subscribe below because I'm going to be posting uh, intermediate guides and more advanced guides and even like super high level guides later on in the set. Uh, but let's put in our sixth invoker right now. So uh, we are missing one slot. We are five out of six invokers, so we don't really get an additional bonus. But how do we get to six? Hmm, pop quiz time, I guess. Well, if you've been paying attention, you would know that if we level up, we are able to fit in additional units. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, we level up to level eight by clicking the buy XP button down there. And then we can put in this Cassiopeia to get to six invokers. So now we get 20 mana every three seconds and an additional 15 to all my invokers. So we're going to be casting a lot. And then with the combat caster augment, uh, after casting your spell, your units gain a shield. That's going to be a very, very powerful effect that we're going to be having. So uh, you always want to find things that kind of synergize with each other. I didn't plan on this game happening this game, or I didn't plan on this combination happening this game because augments are pretty random. Uh, but you kind of have to just piece things together each and every game. It's going to be different every time. It's kind of hard to play the same exact game twice because of the way like RNG works. For example, in... Like, let's say you're playing Hearthstone or something like that. You might get the same starting hand every time, and you could keep doing that over and over. But in TFT, the game does not work like that. Imagine if you're playing like a card game, but the decks are randomized every single time, and you don't really get to choose your deck sometimes. That's kind of like what TFT is, uh, but maybe that's not the best analogy. Uh, we're now on a new carousel round, and you may notice the items are a lot shinier. The reason why is that after stage four, so stage five and beyond, the carousels actually have fully completed items that you kind of pick up. Uh, so this signifies that you're kind of in the later parts of the game, and that's why they give full items instead of item components, because we're pretty much never going to get an item component ever again. Um, well, that's a lie, but you can kind of think of it that way. Uh, so we did get a tank item. It's called Gargoyle Stoneplate. So Grant 15 armor and 15 magic resistance for each enemy targeting the holder. Again, I know the items are a bit intimidating. It can be a lot to think about at first, but I promise you that if you play a bunch of games, maybe like 10 of them, maybe 50, depends on the person, right? We all learn at different speeds and that's perfectly okay. Uh, you will get used to the items later on, uh, but we're just gonna put that on our Shen because it's a great tank item and he already has two other tank items. So Shen's just gonna be hopefully a super tank. I mean, he might die to this guy because he's getting whacked on by like a bunch of different players, but hopefully the Shen buys us enough time for our Karma to kind of deal enough damage to defeat the enemy. Unfortunately, this round, I think we're actually going to lose, but again, that's okay because if we look on the right-hand side, we have 98 health, so we have a lot of time to make our team a little bit stronger. In the late game, you kind of want to finalize your team compositions. So you want to see what kind of final synergies you could put in. You could also do something called putting in like legendary units. So we haven't really seen too many of those yet, but I'll show you. On our bench right now, we have a Belveth. You may notice that her name's in orange. And orange just means that they're legendary. 
similar to other games, right? And legendary units are just really, really powerful. And you may notice that her synergies are Void and Empress. And we sold some Void units before. We had, uh, I believe it was Cho'Gath, we had Kassadin, and we had, I think, Kai'Sa as well. But we didn't really play Void in this game, right? But the good news is, is that with this Belbeth, we still could play her because a lot of the legendary units are just so strong that you don't really need synergies to make them work, which is kind of cool in some cases. So uh, if we do level up, which we can in like a couple of rounds, we could put this additional Belbeth in, even though she has no synergies with our team to make our team that much stronger. And you may have noticed that legendaries don't really show up that often. I talked about this before, but we have the leveling odds down here. Gray means that they're one cost units such as the Jin. Green is a two cost, blue is three cost, purple is four cost, and legendary is five cost. And these numbers change throughout the game. So if you rewind, fast forward, uh, based on our level, these odds kind of change. So uh, right now, legendaries show up 4% of the time for each card slot. And after we level up, we'll have an even higher chance as you'll see in just a second. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about though, let's buy this Sejuani and Lissandra because those are pretty big upgrades for our team, is this little thing right here that just dropped from the dragon. So after stage five, or stage five and beyond, a lot of the items you get are stronger. And this is what we call an item armory. So if you hover over it or click on it, you could drag it into your shop to open an armory of completed items. And we see a bunch here. So we could build any of these to kind of fit our team. So you typically pick whatever you're missing in your team right now. Uh, but I'm gonna pick the Edge of Night because it's a good Belveth item and I kind of want to play around my Belveth a little bit. Uh, right now we're facing off against someone and if you want to see who you're facing, you could hover over the PvP icon over here, click their name and then see what they're playing. So this person's playing six Piltover and has a bunch of other synergies as well. And honestly, uh, we are going to be facing one of his ghosts right now. So we're not actually facing the real player and that's because there are three players left in the game. It's not that big of an important detail, but it's just something to know about in the future. But now that some other person got knocked out, we are finally in a 1v1 scenario, so we will be actually facing each other next round. But let's go ahead and level up. So I'm gonna click this a bunch of times. We leveled up to level nine, and then now we can put in this Belveth. And you may have noticed the odds from legendary units change from 4% to 16%. So leveling definitely does help out your team a ton. Wow, we got Rise. Rise is an invoker. And since Rise is a five cost unit and Cassiopeia is a one cost unit, I'm just gonna put the Rise in because he's just gonna be a little bit better. Um, Cassante is also a legendary unit. Let's just roll down by all the shiny units. Uh, there's another Belveth that's gonna keep rolling. And then, oh, look, we found three copies of Belveth. So during the round, if you find like a three copies of a unit, they will upgrade after the round ends. So we don't get the two-star Belveth right now, but hopefully next round it'll happen and that'll make our team a lot stronger. But we are, wow, this is actually a pretty close fight. Do we actually win this one? I thought we were losing at first, but right now it seems like we are going to win. So we actually deal a bunch of damage to this player and they are at one HP. Unlucky, we almost won the game, but it got denied. But we got Belveth two-star, which makes our team even stronger. So it should be almost a guaranteed win in this next round. Uh, so hopefully you all enjoyed this video uh, before we get into the final fight. Again, I know that this video could seem a little bit intimidating because we talked about a ton of stuff. And honestly, there's a ton more to go over in TFT if you want to get better and better. But what I recommend if you are a new player and want to like kind of get started in TFT is literally just play and just try to have some fun, you know, experiment with different stuff, uh, go into different synergies every game, maybe try other little legends around and just find out what works for you and figure out what you kind of like or dislike about the game because this is a nice break from other games because it's kind of like the first of its genre or second of its genre because it was based on some other games before uh, but i feel like tft really has like perfected or has like the best version of like an auto battler uh, but i do have a lot more advanced guides on my channel and on my website that you all can check out it's going to be in the description below uh, but we did end up winning this game, which is kind of cool. Did not plan for that to happen. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to get started to get playing TFT. Uh, I recommend checking out the leveling guide that I'm going to post in a little bit. And also the tier list that I post every single Friday. So hopefully you all enjoyed this video. This is kind of like a different format than what I did before for the beginner guides. But hopefully this one still worked. Uh, if you do have any questions, do put them down in the comments below or join the Discord server. 
The uh, link is in the description. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.